I actually sing to my trees. They like it, I swear. Some of these avocados that I sang to are flowering way better than the other ones up there that I haven't sang to yet. Aloha my friends, Christina here and I'm so happy to welcome you to my organic fruit orchard here in Hawaii. It has been my goal and my dream to restore this nine acre property to brim and drip with the most delicious organic fruits and vegetables. I've spent the past two years doing my best to restore this property and I've currently just planted 300 exotic fruit trees. This property was once an old pineapple plantation and it was abandoned for more than 20 years. My vision has always been to restore it back to its natural beauty and to transform it into an organic, thriving permaculture and organic fruit orchard. I started in this one spot and I worked my way around. This part of the property was once covered in eight to 15 foot tall guinea grass. You couldn't even stand where I'm standing right now. You could not walk through this field. We went through three phases of regenerating the soil here on the property. When we came in, we realized that all of the buffalo grass or the guinea grass that was here had completely depleted the soil. So we've just spent the past two years focusing on renourishing the soil. It's all about the quality of your soil. So we went through three different phases on the property. The first phase was to remove the guinea grass. The second phase was to plant sun hemp to help restore nitrogen back into the soil. And the third phase was planting peanut grass by hand, one by one across the entire property to help create not only a beautiful ground cover and an edible grass, but also peanut also helps to restore nitrogen back into the soil as well. The property was highly overgrown with invasive trees, grass, and much more, and we took the time to completely remove all of it. There were even some java plum trees that had barbed wire grown into the trees. That's how unkept and how uncared for this property was. So we took the time to remove all of the invasive species that had taken over, and we've taken the time to replant what is good and nourishing for the soil here. There were many natural barriers that we had to overcome when I decided to restore this property. And one of the first big barriers was learning how to manage a property that wasn't flat. As you can see behind me, this is a very hilly property and we had to learn how to plant on very steep slopes. We've had to look at the light, the water, the rainfall, the wind, and figure out where best to plant things so that they can truly thrive. Many people might look at what we've done so far and think to themselves, all you've done is plant grass, but we've done so much more than that. It's far too easy to go to a store nowadays and get fertilizer or weed killer and handle the problem quickly and add pesticides into your soil. But we've taken the time, and by time I mean two years, to hand plant all this perennial peanut so that we could restore the soil properly. We need to be having more discussions about enriching our soils because the better quality soil you have, the more nutritious your food will be. And if I'm talking about growing an organic permaculture-based fruit orchard here, the soil quality is everything. I want to be growing the most nutrient-rich fruits and vegetables here. You can also see that I have a lot of bamboo here on the property. And when I first moved in, I was overwhelmed by the amount of bamboo that I had. But a huge part of sustainability is taking the resources that you have and figuring out how to use them. So I ended up taking some of this bamboo and using it to build my garden. All the poles that are in my garden were taken from the bamboo here in my backyard. We're only about halfway through the process of restoring this property. And so far the property is divided into two parts. The first part are the fields that I've shown you where we've planted the peanut grass and we've worked to restore the soil for all of the fruit trees that will be planted. The second part of the property is what I like to call the enchanted forest. And essentially what I've done is I've taken the forest part of the property and I've cleared it to plant the trees or the exotic fruit trees that need a bit more shade. Things like jackfruit, durian, soursop, and more. 
As you can see right here, I've planted multiple varieties of bananas here, and I've planted them in between the fields and the enchanted forest because this is where they do best. They're not hit too much by the wind or the sun. They have a little shade and they get a lot of water. They will do just fine right here. So when it rains really hard, this part of the property becomes a winding river. So I've made sure to only plant things right here that absorb a lot of water that can do really good with copious amounts of water and that can also help with drainage. You have to make sure that you look at placement because different trees and plants do better in different places. I can have the same banana tree and I can plant one over there and one over there and one will do great over there and one will absolutely die there. So you've got to test out where your plants will thrive the most. And I think one of the most difficult parts about growing a fruit orchard or planting anything is tree or plant placement. It's a huge deal. I have about 50 papaya trees planted on the property and all of them were grown from seed that I grew. I truly believe one of the biggest secrets to health is eating fruits that are fresh, ripe, whole and organic and homegrown. So far we have planted more than 300 fruit trees on the property and believe it or not but that's still not enough. So I think we'll eventually have more than 500 fruit trees growing on this property. But as you can see right here we've just planted more than 12 different types of avocados and exotic fruits like caimitos, longans, lychees, uh, different kinds of exotic fruits from all over the world on this side of the property and I've planted more than 15 different kinds of citrus varieties on this hill of the property. And the reason why I did that is because this side gets more shade and more water, so all of the avocados and the exotics will do great on this side, and this side gets blasted by sun and is a lot drier, and citrus does great in those conditions. So standing right behind me, you'll see at least more than 150 trees planted in this side of the property. It's actually kind of funny because on camera, some of these trees might look really small, but when you're standing next to them in real life, they're much bigger. It's hard to get an idea of how much space these trees are taking up because they look so small, but this is a huge area to be planting in. It's so beautiful. I've done my best to organize things by type and zone. That way when I'm going out to pick, I won't be running all over the property at different times, but I'll be able to pick things as they begin to ripen or drip from the trees and it'll make harvesting that much easier. I've been extremely intentional with every single step in this process of restoring this orchard, not just from restoring the soil, but also to tree placement, where they're getting light, where they're getting wind, and so much more. I even talk to my plants and my trees. I want them to know that they have an amazing home here, and I want this place to feel like home to many. I want it to feed the community, and I want it to be thriving for all of us. In addition to a fruit orchard or also on the property, I really wanted to have my own vegetable garden, a place where I could go every day and pick my veggies and my greens so that I could make fresh salads and juice. And when I arrived on the property, I saw potential for an orchard, but I had a really difficult time figuring out where I could potentially put my vegetable garden. So I studied the light placement and the wind on the property for about three months and finally figured out the perfect place to put my garden. There was nothing on the side of the property when I first decided to put it there. So I brought in a bulldozer, I flattened out the space. We created the beds out of cedar wood. We laid down weed mat, we added in gravel. I made bamboo poles for lighting using the bamboo in the back of the enchanted forest. And I even got organic compost soil from my neighbor to add in. The entire process of creating my garden from beginning to end took at least six months. 
The entire process was extremely intentional because I wanted to have a place where all of these vegetables could grow abundantly for me so that I could live as sustainably and as healthfully as possible. I'm so proud of my garden and it's become one of my sanctuaries on the property. I love going in there on days and spending hours weeding or planting new seeds. For me, it is one of the most incredible feelings to be able to grow and enjoy your own food. There's really nothing quite like it, to eat foods that come from the earth and that nourish and nurture you. I also find that when you grow your own food, not only is it more nutritious, but it tastes better as well. Since installing my garden, I've given it a few refreshers. I've stained my fence, I've added in new bamboo, I'm always mixing in new compost soil to keep the soil rich and nutrient filled for the fruits and the vegetables, and I frequently rotate the beds so that I'm always growing and trying new different varieties of veggies. I have a blast in my garden and I get so excited about growing food. I was absolutely devastated losing my co-op in Houston because it was such a huge part of my life and my heart and it was such a big change in my life. But I wouldn't be here today without having gone through that experience and all of the knowledge and the tools I gained from my 11 years of running Roughly Organic has brought me to this point to help me do what I'm doing at this point in time. And I'm grateful for that. I think evolution is an important word here because I feel that we rebirth ourselves several different times in life. Maybe three, four different times in our lives we might go through different experiences or periods of rebirth. And I definitely feel like I'm going through one right now and I'm incredibly grateful for it. This is such a huge project to be a part of and I hope that in three to five years I will be standing here and behind me will be a thriving fruit orchard. And I'm so excited to be able to bring you all along the journey Thank you all for being a part of my journey for so long. Thank you for your support, your encouragement, your love, and your faith in me as I'm doing my absolute best to inspire you and everyone I know to heal themselves through eating more fruits and vegetables and to practicing more wellness on a daily basis.